Hello and welcome to today's episode on Insights with Veterans of the Travel Trade. Today I have one of the most dynamic ladies in the travel trade who is currently the president of Travel Agents Association of India, just been elected for the next two years. She has served in various capacities at Travel Agents Association of India. She is the director of uh, New Airways Travels Delhi and also plays a role in CII, FICCI, PhD Chamber of Commerce and in uh, FAITH, which is the org nodal organization of the travel and hospitality industry. Mrs. Jyoti Maya. Welcome Jyoti Ji. Thank you so much, so Amish. This, this program is entirely about the veterans in the travel trade and you have been in the trade for almost 40 years now. So the first question I'd like to ask you is, can we go down memory lane, can you tell me about what the travel trade was like when you started and how it has evolved, changed and how the agency community has adapted itself to all these changes and challenges. Well, what I go back to the going down the memory lane is actually, uh, it's really a memory lane because I think where we are today, there's a huge difference between what it was. When I joined the industry, which was literally 40 years back, I think it was an industry where everyone wanted to be in. It was an industry where you would say it was next to Bollywood. You know, that was how we were compared as an industry. Everyone wanted to be invited to any event that was happening of the industry. All the airlines, the tourism bodies, whoever were still coming into focus, were all wanting to be a part of this industry. There was no association who did not want to be linked with our industry. And, and of course, the ease of doing business, my God. There's a vast change where that is concerned. You know, uh, no, it's not only about money making, you know, there are a lot of concepts and the way you do business, the ethics of business, your, uh, how good you are with your people, your old, you know, connections, your connections which keep working through. Whatever my connections were at the, those times are still working for me today. Today, I don't think people are really sensitized to what their feelings are with each other. It's only about business. So there are a lot of changes one has seen. It's evolving with emotions. It's evolving with the habits, the ways of doing business. And of course, the biggest which our members are still under the crunch of is making money. There is basically like everyone asks us today, how are you surviving? We've sen seen the paper times where everything was controlled by the industry. By the That time, there was hardly any tourism happening. There was more focus on the ticketing part and how you are traveling. It could be railways, it could be road, or of course, the airlines. The fares, what we have seen, uh, we have seen Delhi, Bombay, Delhi selling at 400 rupees. Delhi, you know, and look, not that I say the fares have gone up a lot, but I think it's just what we have seen that I'm bringing into focus. Uh, I feel there is everything, it was hand-holding by the airlines at that time, so I think it was working beautifully. And now I suddenly feel the airlines have moved away from the travel agents. They are now uh, just focusing on how they are surviving. They've forgotten there is, a, there is a relationship between the agents which should have continued. Then we could have both grown together. Now they've become very self-centered, I would say, exactly. Because they are wanting to survive. I don't blame them totally for it. Because whenever you talk to the airline, they say we have our challenges. But so do we. So couldn't we have found a way of going forward together? You know, I think that is what is very important. And what about technology? Has technology challenged the agency community, helped the agency community over the years? Technology would have come in. Next is robotics. Maybe we'll be, we, there'll be no human beings interacting with our passengers. It'll only be robots. So technology, but you have to take that as an answer, a, a helping hand. Not They can't be dominating us to do our businesses. And even today, I think the human touch for our industry is very, very important. So I don't see anyone, somehow I just don't see it, even the OTAs are doing business in our country. I don't. I think 80% business is still being doing offline, are they being doing offline. It's not total an online business. So I, I don't think it could be an enabler, but it can't be the end result. Yes, of course, technology has come to stay and enhance more and more. But the dynamics will keep changing on a daily basis and maybe every minute after a few couple of years that what is relevant today may not be relevant even after a second forget tomorrow so i think we have to just adapt it and move with it and that's all what it is all about you also mentioned tourism so th that's been a big change uh, in the way travel agents operated because i think about 20 years back a travel agent was basically a ticketing agent but now that this evolution has happened where 
every travel agent is also into tourism. So to that extent, uh, do you think uh, the older travel agents have really molded themselves to the tourism industry? Yes, I think most of the agents have adapted that model. See, when, why are you in business? You are in business to make some money. And that is, of course, is the bottom line. And we have to be very straightforward about it. I mean, why would we do business? We are not a charitable house. We are not NGOs running this place. So I think that is very important. And if we have to change with the change of times, we have to adapt new things. We have to move towards products that are enabling us to survive. And that is why every travel agent has moved. The only thing is how many have been able to adapt it in the right format and how educated they are to take forward. And that's, I'm going to say that right now, that is why TAI has come into focus and that is why associations are formed. So that we can handhold our members to move forward. In one time when a person was travelling from India, and uh, I'm sure we've all seen it, we used to look for our relatives. So wherever our relatives would be in the part of the world, we would travel there. And we would be happy to stay with them and that's the only thing we knew. We could go and eat out, but it was everything focused in that, in that one house where we were travelling to. And we would literally request our uh, relatives or friends staying abroad, oh we are coming. And sometimes you know people staying abroad later on told me that they were quite fed up of relatives coming all the time. Because their house would be full of relatives and they did not even have personal space available. But I think now with the change of times, now even a young youth who's travelling for the first time does not want to stay with the relatives. And that's a change we have seen. And we today, India is a very growing country. I have seen the youth is strong, of course we are the youngest country. And uh, we are all uh, self-sufficient and we have more disposable income available. So tourism has to move because now everyone is buying us and that is everyone is buying India too because we are the maximum spenders. So now coming to that, the younger crowd, the millennials, how much of a challenge do you think it is for a travel agent to deal with a millennial? Because they seem to be more uh, inclined towards a do-it-yourself, they do everything on their own. So how are we as travel agents uh, targeting ourselves towards the millennials? And what do you think one should really do to get those millennials to come back to the travel agents? See, the millennials think they know it all, uh, which is not true. When it comes to travel, they may know it. They may know much more than us in certain fields where you can talk about technology or the or certain other aspects of life and industries. But where it comes to tourism, yes, you can get uh, all information on Google. How much is it actually? How much is it truthful? Let's not say right. But how much is it truthful? How much is it enhanced by social media? How much is it enhanced by people who are developing a certain country or a place? It's still to be seen. It's only you get very disappointed once you follow a certain format of a Google and you think you know it all. So I, that's what I say. They, in the end, they do need a face. They, need, they do need someone to interact on. To formulate a trip for them, they need us. Because I think in the future is all about experiences and it's all about experiential travel. And that the more that you travel, the more they'll realize it also and they will come back to us if they are not already there. But I see the youth is con contacting us travel agents. Actually, we should change the world travel agents. We are more of travel professionals now and consultants. And that is how we are approaching them too. And that is what I would like all my members to approach uh, the traveler basically. Because we are not agents. We are not agents at all. Anyway, the airlines are not giving us commission, so we are not agents. And most of the time, the hotels are doing uh, absolutely rack rates with no commissions. You have to build up to your own marketing or whatever fee you want to add. So we are not agents. We are actually the principal for them. And that is how we should move forward. And that is how we should deal with the youth. We should be the face to formulate a trip for them. But when it comes to uh, giving them an experience, yes, technology will come in. Because they do not want to be contacted when they are alone and traveling. They want everything on a WhatsApp. They all want it on a platform of telephones or phones. They want everything to be delivered to them right at home, which can only technology can enable that. So it has to be a process where we actually combine everything and deliver to the youth. And I'm sure we, will, we are not going anywhere. So now coming to your 40 years in the travel trade, uh, how friendly is the trade when it comes to ladies in the trade? I mean, from what I've seen, I think the travel trade has been very open, but you would be able to tell us more. And do you think there is a glass ceiling? Do you think that uh, growth prospects for ladies are limited within the trade? Or is the trade open to... To women? Yes. Well, I think I'm a, a, absolutely a woman uh, I, empowerment. Uh, I just emphasize on women empowerment. And my being here says it all. Because I think uh, even in my team, I have 
maximum men. I don't know if I really do have a woman. I think maybe in, in some one part of the region or chapter. But yes, the women have been adapted in this industry. The only thing I feel is they are not coming out right in the forefront. And that is what they need to do. And uh, it is the men who have to push them out also. Because I think uh, the Indian society somehow, though we work together, and we believe in working together, supporting each other. We do a lot of things together. We are the women. Women are behind the scenes with in all the offices. I feel, and most of the offices, especially even in the big organisations of, you could talk about any organisation. You'll see there are women who are at the hospitality desk. They are at the ones who are at the back end office. But somehow they are not in the forefront. So I think it's just that they need a push. They need to be motivated to come out and be more seen in the open. Yes, they do have the challenges, especially in a country like ours, because uh, even in the youth, I've seen that though they are, there is a change. It's not that I don't say there is a change, but still there are certain things a woman is, you know, supposed to be still doing at home, where the domestic uh, values come in. And even your parents and your in-laws uh, expect a lot from you as a woman because that's a that's a touch and we women are made especially in our country have a different way of looking at our families but that doesn't stop them from coming forward that doesn't stop them. now coming to your presidentship of Thai what is your vision for Thai what is Thai going to how is Thai going to empower the member agents and where do you see Thai two years from now well I'm try I hope we I going down the memory lane I think Thai was a body every airline wanted to reckon with, every association wanted to reckon with, every, like I said, any every consumer also wanted to get involved somewhere in our industry and that's what I wanted back to. I want to open the communication doors which have been closed with most of the airlines, with most of our suppliers, where they feel they have to work on their own behalf and we think we have to work on our behalf ourselves and to make it a very lucrative field let's put it that way but i think we need to work collectively to form certain rules and regulations certain home truths need to come in front certain way of workings have to come in front to make this a win-win situation for both of us and that can only happen that we are not always on a saddle or not on a uh, ego trip not on a trip where we are not trusting each other so I think we need to trust each other more and say that is how we are going to build this industry. And one thing which I keep saying and emphasizing is that I need to have a very strong voice with the government, especially the government of this country. We are the citizens of this country. And if the government is not going to look after us, who are they going to look after? And we need to collectively form rules and regulations, do's and don'ts, a recognized industry, a regulated industry to see how we can move together in the right format. And for that, no other association can do it. I think, I don't mean no other association can do it. I mean, only a travel association can do it. And I think Thai leads in that format. And uh, I would say that we do need helping hands from associations like FIKI, CII, PhD, Indo Chamber of Commerce, and all the other commerce industry associations which are in the public. But we, only we know how to run our own industry. And we should be the face and not other decisions. So thank you Jyoti ji for this. So there we have it. Mrs. Jyoti Mayal, President Thai. One of the most dynamic ladies. We hope you enjoyed this show. And if you did, please press like or share. Thank you.